Hello there! Today we are talking about typography. It's a huge topic and impossible to cover in one short video, but bear with me, I will do my best to mention everything that should be useful to you. Let's start with some terms first. Many people say fonts when they refer, for example, Helvetica or Open Sans. Well, actually, a collection of fonts is called typeface. A font is just one variation, like Helvetica Bold, since we are not so serious here in this channel and word font is more commonly used, I will just keep using it in this video. I hope you don't mind. For marketing websites, I would use whatever fits with branding. When companies are mature enough, it is common to invest in a nice custom font. When it comes to apps, I would use native font unless there is a strong need to use something else. In my opinion, apps should look like the OS they live in as much as they can. And typography is an easy way to make it look like a part of the OS and users will not get surprised by a random font. Just imagine if all apps would use different fonts, the whole mobile using experience would deteriorate, it would be horrible. I could go on uh, for a little while about this topic, but let's continue to another one. You may ask yourself how many different fonts you need. Well, the answer is the least possible. In marketing, websites use up to two and in apps, just one. Of course, it's not written in stone. You can use whatever amount you need. This is my recommendation. The more variation you add, the more confusing it is for a user and also legibility drops. Now we are getting to the most important part, modular scale. So what is this scale everyone talks about? Well, it's a simple ratio, a number that predictively determines increments and decrements in size and line heights. The formula for calculating sizes or line heights is easy. Take a base size and start dividing or multiplying by a ratio you have chosen. For example, websites will have something between 14 and 18 pixels for a base size. Marketing websites will have bigger font sizes, while apps will probably have a bit smaller sizes. It really comes down to how much data are you showing in your interface. If we imagine ours is 16 pixels and our ratio is 1.5, then it means the next bigger size will be 24 pixels. If you want to determine an even bigger size, then it's 24 times 1.5. You get the gist of it? Cool. Let's open Figma and make some styles for typography. Uh, thankfully, somebody created a plugin that will make this tutorial a little bit easier. So let's hop to Figma. So there is this plugin called Font Scale. Let's talk about the interface for a bit. We have basically two, um, one dropdown and one input field and then one button. So base size, let's say it's 16, like we agreed from previous discussion. And then we're gonna choose 1.5 called Perfect Fifth. This plugin is probably very good for beginners or somebody who does not want to, um, I don't know, invest like days, months or whatever into crafting typography uh, because it kind of limits you by this drop down. You, you don't have like a free form field where you can put, I don't know, 1.9 or something like that. It's pretty much what it is right here. But you know, uh, for most cases, probably like 99% of cases, this is perfectly fine. So let's generate layers. Okay. Now that we have some sizes made using a modular scale, it's time to create styles so we can reuse them in our design. The next very important thing is the naming convention. You want to make it easy for everybody to apply proper styles. You can take a few different approaches to naming text styles. So you can use sized based naming systems. You can uh, use semantic naming system that matches with HTML tags, or you can uh, use a descriptive naming system that explains the intended use. If you have some other way of naming those, go for it. It's really up to you. In our project, we can first divide styles for body text and headings. I made a nice breakdown of how you can name your styles. I will follow along with this cheat sheet and name my styles accordingly. 
So first we have body, uh, base, larger, largest, and then smaller, smallest. Basically like uh, something like t-shirts. Uh, well, in t-shirt example, you might probably have, uh, for example, M, XL, X, XL, and then S, XS. So you can also use something like this. It's really up to you. I'm gonna stick with this one because it's very simple. Uh, we actually had something very similar in my past work uh, place, so I'm kind of used to it. So I'm gonna divide first body from heading and start with naming. So we are back in our generated, uh, generated um, scale. So let's say up to here, it seems like a good candidates for body styles and this might be like heading styles uh, body forward slash base i'm gonna copy i'm gonna paste body forward slash blah, blah, body forward slash base <laughs> great style Great, now we have uh, first one. And we are using this forward slash pattern over here because in Figma, uh, everything that comes after forward slash uh, is kind of section for itself. Uh, let's try to tackle this one. It's body smaller. Let's go to textiles plus new one. See, now that I want now when I want to select uh, something, you see that body has a container for itself, and then let's do the same with the rest. This will take a while. I'm gonna fast forward. Okay, so now I'm done with that. So when I select some text element, you see we have two sections, body, heading, it's pretty uh, self-explanatory. And now I want to talk about line heights. You can use the same ratio that you used in your size scale, but you can use something else as well. For example, I will put 1.5 ratio for body styles because it's commonly used and will likely look good. And I will put 1.3 for headings because with bigger font sizes, you want to reduce that empty space which happens between lines. It will look better and a little bit easier to read. So let's tweak the styles we just created to include line height as well. So let's uh, select, um, well, let's do it like this. Like this, uh, base, this is for line height. I will put 150% because Figma works with percentages. It's not line height uh, that you would commonly use in CSS. So 1.5 is actually 150%. I will copy this for convenience. Go back. Uh, no, we dealt with this one. I didn't make larger, great. Okay, made a boo-boo. Okay, let's just quickly create one. Just realize that. Uh, and then I'm gonna put it here. Let's fix this, 150, excellent. And now we are in headings. 1.3 is 130%. Again, this part of making design system is a little bit tedious but you will be happy in the end. Okay, I think uh, we have everything in place now. So the practical part is done, but you may be wondering how do you do the same for iOS and Android? Well, from their docs, it seems the be base font size for iOS is 17 pixels in Figma. You will see they use points. We're not going to units in this video. And for Android, 14 pixels. You now know the rest of the math, it's quite the same. I want to thank everyone subscribed and also invite all non-subscribed watchers to click on that nice subscribe button somewhere there. 
Let's grow this channel together. And also I host a podcast called Design Party. You can find the link in the description of this video. That's it. Until next time. Bye bye.